In Voices of the Void, you pick up trash, scrub your stash, and do your job to make cash. If that doesn't sound like a super fun game, you're probably right. Cause this game isn't fun, but somehow it is. This game's been baffling me. By all accounts, it shouldn't be entertaining. I have played the game for about 20 hours now, and in that span of time, I have picked up trash, tweaked some knobs, did some math, reheated leftovers, wrote down some numbers, traveled back and forth to repetitive locations, gotten scared by cardboard, cleaned floors and walls, listened to white noise, and hallucinated. So, you know, kind of my normal day to day. In Voices of the Void, you are working as a scientist at a research lab and you really just do that job. I think the best way to describe the game is like some kind of incremental liminal spaces-esque game, which isn't a very concrete. This game confuses me. It's like if a freemium game was actually just free and also about radioing a Mouse with an uncanny element to it. It's pretty mundane, but there's always this feeling of unease or uncertainty, even panic sometimes when you see an extra blip on your radar. The gameplay loop's pretty simple. Every day, boss man messages you to tell you what you need to submit by day's end, and then the rest is up to you. The process of getting a drive ready to ship does take a while, so there is a lot of potential to min-max. You use a console to ping objects, and when you lock in on one, you wait for your satellites to unscramble an image of it. Then you start downloading by adjusting values until they start producing a high percentage, and then you wait for the download. Once it's downloaded, you can listen to the noise you captured and export it on a drive for shipping. After upgrading, drives may need to be processed, which is another increment of time, but as soon as you save the signal from step two, you can queue up another. In between all of these events, you'll need to upkeep satellites and servers by doing math. Simple math. Simple math that is so simple that it'll make you feel like a complete moron if you get it wrong. If any of the satellites are down, you'll have to travel to them and math on location. As time progresses and your wallet fattens, you can purchase upgrades by either increasing how easy it is to do drive stuff, making servers break less, or buying equipment to make things easier. I suggest getting a wood chipper and trash bags ASAP, cause selling trash is great, and the wood chipper will turn all the boxes you break and all the garbage you heap into loads of money. When I was suggested this game, I asked my friend what it was about, and they simply said, you get a real job, and then a smiley face. I asked if it's spooky, cause I've been streaming semi-spooky stuff for October, and they said, kinda, and then a smiley face face. I asked what I should know going in and they just told me, play it blind. Smiley face. And I hate them for that. Especially because I relayed this story to chat when I streamed the game and whenever I asked a question, they just sent a smiley face. Now, you should go into the game fairly blind because part of the fun I think is learning, despite how Saturday morning cartoon that sounds. I will say though, I was pretty confused about the actual drive system at first. Mostly the second step. Basically, tweaking these numerical knobs adds a value to the middle number, which moves the top value. You want to get the top value to a specific number, which will result in the yellow number going up. You want to get the yellow number as close to 100% as possible to have faster download speeds. The bottom is a little more precise, but the top can have like three different channels that the signal could be on, so you might have to cycle them. Another oddity is not every item is used by using the use command. Like, putting drives into equipment is done by dragging and placing them into this little slot, and filling up your ATV with gas is done by rotating the gas can over the cover. I think my biggest gripe about this is just the menu and control system. To my knowledge, if you're looking at something, you have no way of getting your items out because your numerical keys will then be tied to actions for whatever you're looking at. I don't mind the draggy, grabby system they have, because, I mean, the physics are fun, but the controls are just weird. To put an object into my inventory with hotkeys, I drag it and I press Alt. If I want to take something out with hotkeys, I use the number keys to select it, press the number again to have it in my hand, and then I can either throw it with Alt, click, or drop it with Alt, R. I highly suggest swapping Alt to, like, a side mouse button if you have it. It's not a completely horrible system or anything, it just definitely takes some time to get used to. The game does have an extensive help menu, and admittedly, I probably should have looked at that more. So, a very interesting aspect of this game is that it's a horror game, but it isn't. In my first 10 hours, the scariest thing I found was a cardboard cutout that's like an easter egg if you type in alien to the console. The game is really only a horror game if you, like, want it to be. 
If you sleep all night and work all day, you probably won't run into many spooky events, but if you adapt my sleep schedule, chances are you'll meet a funny friend or witness some oddities. Same thing kind of goes for the signals. At level 0, they're basically just white noise. But process them to level 3, and maybe you'll get some fun surprises, smiley face. The game isn't complete, it's like version 0.6 right now, but it's free to download, and it's still plenty of fun as is. But I do worry that, like, Something is wrong with me. I've enjoyed this more than the recent DLC for Pokemon or Sonic. But all this game is, is mundane tasks. It's, it's just a weird dopamine boost. Is my mind trying to tell me something? Like, should I quit my jobs as a content creator and just move to a research lab and scan the stars in solitude? It, it could be so peaceful. There's no more worrying about analytics, no more worrying about jokes being taken poorly, or becoming aware of how bad my writing is, it's just... star scanning. I wouldn't even have to worry about ending the video on a joke. <laughs>